All right, let's go over word problems. To get these problems right, you have to be able to translate the actual words in the problem to algebra. And that's, that's a skill that takes practice. So we're going to do that today. And the first thing I want to show you is I made a list here of all the really important words that you should know to get these problems right. So let me move this piece of paper up here and let's go over this list. So we have, uh, the first one I have up here is is. That's really important. Anytime you see is, you're going to think equals. Anytime you see of, you're going to multiply. When you see the percent symbol or it's written out percent, you're going to divide by 100 or multiply by 1 over 100, same thing. X minus Y, that's just X minus Y. X less than Y and X fewer than Y. These are the two cases that are actually a little bit trickier. When you see less than or fewer than, you actually have to flip the order. Okay, so X less than Y, Y minus X. X fewer than Y, y minus x. So let me give you an example of that real quick. If I said 5 less than 11, it wouldn't make sense to do 5 minus 11, right? Since it says less than, we got to flip the order. So it's 11 minus 5, which equals 6. Okay. When it says product of, you can draw your double bubble and just put the things in there that you're multiplying. So product of x and y, that's just x times y. And finally, uh, usually these, these word problems will say a number or something, but that's just your variable. So anytime it says a number, you can rewrite in the paper X, N, K, whatever variable you're comfortable with. All right, so you guys can pause the video here if you want to write down this list. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into a problem and start practicing this. So let's look at a problem. Okay, so it says five less than a number is equal to half the number. What is the number? So we have less than, right? What did we just say? When it's less than, we have to flip the order. So 5 less than a number, we'll call the number x. There's 5 less than it. And it's equal to half the number. So what we'll do now is we can minus the half x from both sides. Okay, that crosses out and gives us 0 x minus a half x just gives us one half x or positive one half x and we'll swing this five over to the other side and let me rewrite this up here one half x equals five how do i get rid of that one half i'll multiply the left side by two but what i do to the left i have to do the right so two times a half is just one x equals ten and we can check that real quick. This is an easier problem, but 5 less than a number. 5 less than 10 is 5, is equal to half the number. What's half of 10? 5. So this one works out. Okay, let's try a second one. Let me move this up. Okay, so this one says, if 2 thirds of G is 36, what is 12 ninths of G? So we're going to translate from left to right. We're just going to go straight across. So I'm going to rewrite it. 2 thirds of multiplication g is 36 there's our first equation how do i get rid of this two-thirds well i'm going to multiply by the reciprocal and you, you're not subtracting out right because this is a multiplication sign so you're going to multiply by the reciprocal you're going to do that on both sides that just turns into one and you get g is equal to you know what i'll do on the calculator real quick so we have 36 times 3 halves and we get 54 okay so G is 54 let's do the second part what is 12 ninths of G X is 12 ninths of 54 and again, we can use a calculator, no shame in that. So we'll do 12 divided by 9 times 54. Sorry, that was off screen. And we get 72. Okay. So x is equal to 72. And that's our final number. I know it says x here, but... That was the one that we we called what 
We said, what is 12 ninths of G? 72. Okay, let's try another one. We got this one right here. Four more than three times a number is equal to the number squared. If the number is positive, what is it? Let me just move this over just a little bit here, make some room. Okay, so four more than three times a number. Four plus three times a number equals the number squared. So that should be your equation. If you have something like that, you're in good shape. What's minus 3x? We'll do minus 4 from both sides. Minus 4, minus 3x. So we get 0 there. And this is going to be x squared minus 3x minus 4. I did that because in the beginning I noticed that this thing looks like it's probably going to be a quadratic. Okay. So we need to factor x squared minus 3x minus 4. So you can set up your double bubble. I'll do it over here. So we get everything on the same uh, same shot. We'll put our x's in. And that should be x minus 4, x plus 1. Okay, that works. x plus 1 times x minus 4. So what is what can your x's equal? Well, if you set each one of those equal to 0, you'll get x equals negative 1 and x equals 4. And it says if the number is positive, what is it? Well, that means the number has to be 4. I'll kind of circle that there. And I'll write it again over here. x equals 4. So 4 is your answer to that one. Okay. Let's try another one. And just give me a second here to set up the page. This lesson is all about getting a lot of examples done. We'll get a lot of practice in here. Okay. This one says 15% of 120 is equal to y. What is y percent of 50? So even the percent questions, we're going we're gonna to still use the translation rules. What do we say percent means? Percent is 1 over 100, right? So we can write this as 15 over 100 of this times 120 is equal to y. So you can, you can do this, you know, by hand, but I'll just, I'll try and do it like any high school student would do it. They'd probably go to the calculator real quick, and you can do... 15 divided by 100 uh, times 120. So you should get 18. I think you can see that there. So y equals 18. Now we want to know what is y percent of 50 or what is 18 percent of 50, which is going to translate to 18 over 100 times 50. And again, you know what? We'll do with the calculator. 18 divided by 100 times 50. And what do you get? You get 9. Okay. So your answer for this one would be 9. Okay. And again, I know I did 15 over 100, but if, if you knew, you know, you could put into the calculator 15% uh, as 0.15. I'm sure a bunch of you people out there did it like that. So that's another way you could do it. Let's end with this one, and we'll see if we can fit it in on time. The square of the sum of x and y equals 3 fourths the square root of 6x. This expression is equal to... So with a long problem like this, you just try and take it piece by piece. Let's try the top part. The square of the sum of x and y. So let's do, do the sum of x and y first. That's going to be x plus y. It's the square of that equals 3 fourths the square root of 6x. Square root of 6x. And what choice is that? Choice A. Okay. So I gave you a bunch of problems to work on in this one. You had, you had five good word problems. If, as long as you're comfortable with the chart and knowing how to translate, you can get a lot of these questions right. But again, you got to practice, you got to practice. All right? Good luck on the SAT. I'll talk to you soon.